What's up, Nature Freaks? What's going on, guys? Dave and Jeremy back again for another Saturday. Slap in the face. Yeah, and today it's episode five, our final episode, by the way, of our epic venomous encounters. Welcome to Costa Rica. Pura vida. Nature in your face! All right, guys, we're gonna talk about another iconic snake, the Bushmaster. Now, like we talked about the Cobra, that was our Asian bucket list. This was our North American bucket list snake, the Bushmaster. Yeah, so, I mean, incredible snake. We were like, we gotta find one of these. And so we talked to a few people. They showed us on a map, hey, go here. You might find one, you might not. They're super elusive. So we we're hiking through a pretty dense forest. And I mean, finally, it's just like, bam, sitting in situ in an ambush position. Uh, how they sit, they sit and wait, ambush predators. And, and seeing that thing, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like when you find something the first time, like you just had this adrenaline dump, and you're like, holy crap. Especially you almost don't believe it at first. Yeah, particularly that snake, because you have a better chance of not finding it than you do finding it. So when we came across it, we were elated. And they are very unique looking. They have rounded scales. What do they call it? Dragon scales? Yeah, that's that what snake. it looks like, yeah. Very, very epic snake, and very dangerous too. They've got uh, uh, huge venom glands, uh, so, at first, I was like, "How's the snake gonna act? Is he gonna is he gonna go crazy? Is he gonna strike at us?" Probably the most chill pit viper we've ever come across in any of our in any of our encounters. Yeah, and what I've seen other people find a lot of people find them on the move at night. This was during the day, and it was just sitting in vegetation, you know. So maybe that made it more relaxed. I'm not sure. Um, now, the state to have the country name. Of this snake is the mouth of way the ox killer so yeah that's we're not as big as an ox so that tells you how oh, bad that venom could be but yeah we got some epic footage of the snake it never showed any aggression just sat there and then eventually we had to play with it yeah we, we hooked it we held it hooked it held it and it would turn around and look at you but it, it was never spastic never you know tried to really jack you up it never struck i don't think no not one time no so oh which was I felt like that was like the most dangerous part was how relaxed it was acting. Like, cause you get too comfortable and then it's just like, you, you know, you get that thing close to you. You always got to be on your toes with yeah. venomous animals. Well, the reason it wasn't dangerous is because we saw it. Um, people get bit, step on it because they, they move yeah, their yeah. body in a way where they'll make a depression in the ground and they'll kind of hunker down into the leaf litter where... Or picking it up like idiots. Yeah, right. So they're, they're pretty invisible in the forest. But because we're herping and we're looking for the snakes, we constantly have our eyes on the ground. We had no chance of stepping on one. And we easily were able to see it, identify it as a snake, and film it. What an awesome Yeah. So now we're at the eyelash viper, like the iconic venomous snake of Costa Rica. I think for anybody, the beautiful eyelash viper, they've got the, the large super ocular scales, like little eyelashes. Yep. And so we had gone out with a guide <clears throat> and he had um, a brother's farm, private land. Uh, we were able to go on and hurt that. And so we were finding, you know, several different eyelash vipers in small bushes. Well, we finally spotted a really big one. The motor. But it was like, how high was that thing? Too high for us to the climb. 20, 30 Easily. feet way up there. So just saw the underbelly with a flashlight. And so the guide, you know, being good at what he does, he was like, we're getting this thing down. Yep. So we looked around, we found like a huge branch. 20 yeah. foot long branch. Yeah, like massive branch that a few of us had to like lift up. And we were able to get the snake on the branch and bring it down unharmed. The snake did not fall from the tree. It rode the branch all the way down. Yeah. Another cool thing about the snake is it had a color pattern called the Christmas tree face mm -hmm. and it was red and green. It was a beautiful looking snake. Now there's also the golden eyelash viper which like its name indicates it's bright yellow or golden color but I like these Little because of the green and yellow coloration. Very beautiful snake. Yeah super cool. Uh, started raining so I put a garbage bag on so that I wouldn't get my camera wet. He was making fun of me the whole time. Yeah. It was a green garbage bag. So. <laughs> Even cooler. Yep. So, so this is a good segue because on the way to that, it was uh, raining. Yeah, it was raining. So we we had, to we had a bit of a, a hiccup. 
Mm -hmm. So you want me to tell this? You're gonna tell this? Ah, uh, go ahead. Okay, it was pouring down rain. We had just started to follow the guy. He's in their vehicle, and we have me, Dave, and then we had um, Andrea, Andrea, a yeah. girl that we had met there, and she worked with the guy. And so we're following, pouring down rain. You can't see crap. It's super dark. Well, all of a sudden, he pulls off the road, and so we stop. Uh, Dave backs yeah, up and gets behind him. And, and he gets out of the car and he's like, oh. and like what? what's going on? And he's pointing at the ground. So we get out in the rain. Well, he had gone past a snake. And when Dave backed in the park, Dave ran over yeah, our life or coral snake. He never saw it. <laughs> no, no one. We didn't see anything. Um, oh, we were just following behind the van, and so yeah, we were like, he was mad. Wow, what if this is? Yeah, he did. The guy was mad. We were all bummed, like, and we were like. We just met this guy and we killed like an epic snake in front of him. Right. So uh, the story gets better we because made up we made up for it. Uh, now we weren't with the guide at this time, but we were driving down a completely different road. It might even have been a different night. It was. And I saw something in the corner of my eye. I said, "Snake." We pulled off. It was the exact same snake that I had just ran over the previous same night. species, not the same snake. That'd have been a zombie snake. Right. Same species. <laughs> yeah. Same type of snake. But beautiful, looks very similar to the eastern coral snake that you'd find Gorgeous. in Florida. But you know, so you we were the yellow red stiff. bands. Yep. Yeah, crazy, crazy excited. Now the only problem with this one was we had to be quick because we're right by a national park, and the police don't really mess with you there. But if you're not supposed to mess with animals in and around the national park, and you could right. get harassed. But have you seen the show Locked Up Abroad? Yeah, <laughs> we, we don't want to be on that. that. So, so yeah, we got our footage and got the snake out of the road this time, saved it, and boom. Which leads us to our last epic encounter, the which... Fur de Lance. Yeah, uh, Fur de Lance, most feared snake in Central America, uh, kills more people in Central America than any other snake. Uh, that's because. This snake is very common in, in urban areas. We had found it. I was walking along uh, the fence or in the grass at the National Park. and I, I We were outside it. the National Park. Yeah, yeah. yeah we were on the, it was dark. The park was closed at the time. I saw the snake, and I did not have my hook at the time. So I, I yelled for Jeremy. He came over. He was able to grab the snake. We moved it out onto the road. Boom, we got our photos of our fertile lands. Yeah, by the time I got there, it was like halfway in, through, going through the fence into the national park. It, it almost thought, got it, away. It thought it made it. It was like, I'm half illegal. Mm -hmm. And I was like, not the other half. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah. so we pulled this out. And I kind of equate the um, the attitude of the fertile lands to like a copperhead here. It's psycho? Yeah, like a, yeah, like a pretty snake, but it like, pss, 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 yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't sit still. Yeah. Like a rattlesnake that's just going to kind of like, you can hook it and they're, derpy like these things are trying to jack you up yeah it's, it's one of the more <clears throat> defensive snakes on the planet so you have to be extremely careful when you are filming photographing hooking whatever a fertile lands but we got through it uninjured unharmed we let the snake go boom got our fertile lands it's kind of a weird thing though to be like you're in another country you're just driving streets at night and then you're jumping out and you're chasing venomous snakes. I mean, I'm not trying to like act like we're cool. I'm just saying it's a weird thing if you think about what you're doing. And then yeah. people come by and they're like, who the freak are, you are these foreigners yeah. running around, <laughs> snatching stuff out of the forest and taking pictures of it like idiots, you know? <laughs> right. Hey, that's, <laughs> that's what we do. Yeah, that's what we live for. All right, guys. Well, hey, that's going to end our five-part series and our epic venomous encounters. We hope you guys enjoyed it. If you didn't see one, two, three, and four, go back and watch them. Like our videos, subscribe, and uh, make a comment. Let us know if you guys have any epic animal encounters of your own. Yeah, we need some feedback. If you like these episodes, if we should continue our episodes on something else. If you like the studio, let us know. All right, guys. We'll see you on the next one.